What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the crack -a pack series. I do want to just mention, I know that the giveaway winner is going to be announced today. I'm pre-recording this, so I have no idea who it's going to be, but congratulations to whoever you are. In the meantime, feel free to watch this Eventide pack opening. I'm very excited for this one, guys. Uh, Eventide is a really awesome set. Uh, part of the Lorewind block, uh, I believe it was Morning Tide, Eventide, or yeah, and then uh, Lorewind. All of which were really, really fun themed sets. They were really, really uh, just the art style was very thematic. A lot of really cool substance there and some really powerful cards out of the whole thing as well. So uh, we're going to go through this. We're going to do our best to figure out what our first round draft pick will be. I'm going to go ahead and say I didn't draft during this time. A lot of you guys uh, have probably heard that a million times over this series, but uh, I've not drafted during this. Uh, so we're going to do the best we can, but... Feel free, uh, if you drafted during this time, to let us know what your thoughts are. We'd be really happy to, to know that and hopefully share some knowledge. So, that being said, let's go through this. Uh, Battlegate Mimic uh, is a 2-1 for 1 and a hybrid mana of either white or red. Uh, hybrid mana, I don't know if it was introduced necessarily in this set, but that was a very big theme of this set. Uh, and that just means you can pay one of either color. Uh, but it is a 2 one Whenever you play a spell that's both red and white, uh, the Mimic becomes a 4-2 and gains first strike until the end of the turn. So on the face of this, it's a 2-1 for 2. Not amazing. It's probably going to die, trade down a lot of the time. Uh, excuse me. But uh, if you do play a red and a white spell after the fact, uh, this becomes a 4-2 and first strike until the end of the turn is really, really key. Uh, so first strike is a very powerful mechanic, uh, or keyword I should say, uh, solely because it just means that doesn't really matter what the toughness is quite as much. You're going to be able to just deal your damage first, which means you're probably going to trade up or at least deal some, some pretty massive damage uh, no matter what. Uh, so I actually don't mind this card. I don't think it's amazing, but it is a very aggressive card. And as we all know, limited games are usually one on board. So I'm kind of in for this. I don't know that it's amazing, but we'll, we'll keep it here for now. Uh, Hoof Skulkin uh, is a 2-2 for 3 of any color. Uh, it is a Scarecrow, which is a tribal synergy in this set. Uh, and then you can pay 3 of any color and target green creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, this is a little bit too specific of a card. It's a little weird to say that because it is an artifact. Uh, but take out the ability for a second. It is just a 2-2 for 3. That's not great. Uh, yes, it does fit into any deck, which is a little bit of a plus, but... It's not really doing you justice on the stats end of things. You'd like to be getting a little bit more for that three mana. Now, you can add that ability back in, and in a green deck, you get a little bit of a power boost every once in a while, which you can use as many times as you like, but it's three mana. Yeah, it's of any color, but that's three mana for a plus one, plus one. That's a lot. Uh, I kind of just don't like this card. I don't think it's very good. Um, definitely not as good as the Mimic. Uh, Harvest Gwilion, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is two, and then two hybrid mana of either white or black. Uh, it does have, it is a two four, uh, creature type hag, I think that's funny. Uh, it does have wither, which is a really cool mechanic. So this damage, or this creature, excuse me, deals its damage to creatures in form of negative one, negative one counters. Uh, instead of dealing two damage to a creature, so for instance, two damage to the hoof skulkin, Instead, it actually puts two negative one, negative one counters on it, and then in this case, it would die. But uh, what's really cool about this is the wither mechanic kind of wither da withers down the opponent's creatures over time. Uh, and so, yeah, you may, you know, trade off or, or you know, uh, chump block, excuse me, couldn't think of the word, uh, chump block something really, really big with something with wither, and all of a sudden, it's not quite as strong as it once was. So wither is a really cool mechanic. It just allows you to value up your chump blocks a little bit. That being said, this is not a great example of a good Wither card. Don't think it's terrible, but it's a 2-4 four for 4. That's pretty bad. Uh, it's going to sit there and block for a long time, which is fine, uh, but that's about it. I don't think it's a very aggressive card. It's definitely not a card that I'm looking to play over the Mimic. 
Uh, favor of the over being is one in a hybrid mana of either green or blue. It is an enchant creature, so as long as the enchanted creature is green, it gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. Uh, and as long as it's blue, it gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. Now, obviously, we're looking at a lot of hybrid mana here. It could very easily be both, uh, in which case it gets both of these abilities, which is pretty big. Uh, in my opinion, I think that if you're getting both buffs off of this card, it's great. If you're only getting one, it's probably still okay, but you open yourself up for that two for one, and that's something that you have to evaluate if that's something you're willing to do. For me, I would much rather just have a strong two two, or a two one, excuse me. Uh, I don't think that this is, I, I think this has the potential to be very powerful, uh, but it also has a lot of potential to blow you out, and that's not good. Uh, Puncturing Blast is an instant for two and a red. Uh, it does have Wither as well, and it deals three damage to target creature or player. Now, what's really cool about this is if this doesn't kill a creature, if it targets a creature but doesn't kill it, those counters stick around. And here you're seeing the power of that Wither mechanic where you deal three damage to a creature, that creature still is going to get negative three, negative three for as long as it's on the field, which is awesome. So I actually really like this spell. It is instant speed. It's a kill spell. It can hit players or creatures. Uh, and it's three mana, but you're getting three damage out of the deal and that damage can stick around. So as much as I like the mimic uh, and I would normally edge towards creatures, I do think that this is such a powerful removal spell that you have to take it pretty quickly. Uh, Riverfall Mimic, another one in that mimic cycle is one and a hybrid of either blue or red. Uh, it is also a 2-1, and whenever you play a spell that's both blue and red, it gets three. Th it becomes a 3-3 three, three and is unblockable until the end of the turn. Now, unblockable is very, very good, uh, probably better than First Strike in general, uh, solely because you're guaranteeing that damage. Uh, you're going to be able to swing in with this. I think it's a matter of how reliably can you do that, um, and considering all the hybrid stuff that we're seeing, obviously you're probably going to be able to do it a decent amount of the time. Um, I still think I would take the Puncturing Blast. Uh, if nothing else, it kills the Mimic, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, so I think that the Blast is just a better card overall, but definitely a really good card in that uh, Is It style deck. Uh, Marrow Bone Gnawler uh, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. Uh, Merfolk Rogue. Uh, tap it. Target player removes a card in his or her graveyard from the game, and whenever you play a black spell, you can untap the Bone Gnar. Uh, I don't love this card. Uh, I think it's okay. I mean, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, so it can't really be terrible. Uh, and it does have some random upside, but um, a lot of the times you're not going to be worried about stuff in the graveyard, I think, as much, So at least in limited. Uh, and so in that case, I just don't think this is a great you know, high-priority pick. I don't think it's a bad card, but we've got so many other good picks that I just don't think this is even on the radar. Uh, Inside Out uh, is an instant for one and a hybrid of either blue or red. Uh, switch target creatures, power, and toughness until the end of the turn, and then draw a card. Uh, so funny enough, this is actually a popper combo uh, with some white card. I don't remember what it is, but uh, essentially you buff up the toughness like crazy with all these like super cheap cantropy spells, and then you just switch them and swing in, and it's sweet. It's a really good combo deck, actually, for popper. Uh, but that being said, in limited... Not quite as sold on it. Uh, I think it's fine because you can use it to your advantage, but like you really have to have kind of a build around set setup for this to be good because you're not always going to have creatures that have a higher toughness than you than they do power. So I don't love it here. I don't think it's worth it to take. The only upside I will say is that it does uh, kind of act as a a combat trick on either side. You can either buff your creatures with it uh, if it makes sense, or you can kind of diminish your opponent's creatures if it makes sense there. And you do draw a card, which is nice, but I, I think Puncturing Blast obviously more reliable and definitely what we're going to go for over this. Uh, Beckon Apparition uh, is a hybrid of either white or black. Instant, remove target card in a graveyard from the game, put a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying into play. Uh, this card's just fine. Uh, what's really nice about it is it's instant speed, so you can do it anytime. So if you ever need to just kind of chump block or maybe trade in the air with something, uh, you can do that, which is cool. Uh, but it's not a very high priority card in my opinion. I think it's fine, but just not great. Uh, Monsterfy is a sorcery for three and a green. Target creature gets plus four, plus four until the end of the turn. Uh, and then it also features Retrace, so you can play this card from your graveyard by discarding a land in addition to playing the other costs. Uh, this is a pretty powerful spell, so for four mana you're getting plus four, plus four, and you get replayability later on in the game. 
What I don't like about it, it's sorcery. Uh, if it was instant speed, I'd be super into it. But like, it's sorcery speed, which just means that you're gonna have to your your opponent's gonna see it coming. Is the is the takeaway? Uh, so yeah, it might be able to like really buff up your creature, but if they know it's there, they're gonna they're gonna probably block or attack knowing that it's there. So it's not gonna be worth it. Uh, I do think that this is a powerful card, but again, that puncturing blast that's such good removal that I think we have to take it here. Uh, Clout of the Dominus uh, is a hybrid of either blue or red enchant creature. Uh, the enchanted creature, uh, if the enchanted creature is blue, excuse me, it gets plus one, plus one, and has Shroud. Now, Shroud's not a mechanic we've seen in a long time or a keyword we've seen in a long time. Uh, it just means it cannot be the target of spells or abilities. So that's different than Hexproof, just to clarify. Hexproof is your opponent's spells and abilities. Shroud just means it literally cannot be targeted, essentially. Like, you can't target it, your opponent can't, nothing can. Uh, as long as the creature's red, though, it also gets plus one, plus one, and has haste. Very similar to the kind of Simic-colored uh, enchant creature that we saw. I'm sure that's part of a cycle as well. Um, again, very powerful card. Don't hate it, for sure, but you do run into that issue. Uh, in this case, less so, because it, it can get Shroud. Uh, but if the creature is not blue and it is just red, then it's, it's only getting half of that buff. So just keep that in mind. It's a little bit of a an interesting pick because of that shroud, and I don't know if it's necessarily good, but I think I still want Puncturing Blast. That's just a solid removal spell. I gotta go with it here. We have our Kithkin Soldier token, which is interesting. Um, we have our Hatchet Bully. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a red Goblin Warrior, so pay 2 and a red and tap it, put a negative 1 counter on a creature you control, uh, and then the Bully deals 2 damage to target creature or player. That's pretty strong. Uh, I gotta be honest, that's pretty good. That's a repeatable two damage, or a repeatable shock, I should say. Um, I know that you're putting that negative one counter on stuff that you control, but, like, that's kind of fine. Like, just pick off all your lower end stuff that doesn't matter. I don't know how great this is in comparison to Puncturing Blast. Excuse me, I think I'm gonna stick them together for now. We'll see what we get uh, throughout the rest of this pack. Uh, Invert the Skies is three and a hybrid of either green or blue for an instant. Creatures your opponents control lose flying until the end of the turn if green was spent to play Invert the Skies. Uh, and creatures your op you control gain flying until the end of the turn if blue was spent to play it. So, uh, interesting card here. Um, so obviously the ideal situation is you just play both blue and green uh, to play it. You can just play it in either a blue or a green deck, which is kind of nice as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, this really does allow you to swing in for a lot of damage if you've got a lot of creatures out. I don't know how great this color combo is at doing that, I will say. Uh, but it does give you that option. I do think that it's not quite as good as the Hatchet Bully or the Puncturing Blast, but I think that this in the right deck is a very game-winning card, which I think is sweet. Uh, I don't think I'd take it here, but it's very powerful. Uh, Cauldron Haze. Uh, is one in a hybrid of either white or black. Uh, for an instant, choose any number of target creatures. Each of those creatures gains persist until the end of the turn. So again, persist, really cool mechanic. When it's put into a graveyard from play, if it had no negative one counters on it, return it to play under its owner's control with a 1-1 counter on it. So uh, persisting on a creature just means that if it dies with no counters on it, you get it back. Uh, you get a second shot at it. It does get a little bit of a power reduction with that negative one counter, but pretty cool still. Um, I don't think that this is a card that I'm super interested in, though. Uh, it is a pretty powerful card. It gives you the option to swing in, but if they're going to be blocking and killing your creatures anyway, it doesn't seem great unless you're really going to be trading off. So it seems like a little bit of a narrow card. Uh, I think we've just got better options. So uh, let's see what our rare is. Ward of Bones. It is six mana for an artifact. Each opponent who controls more creatures than you can't play creature cards. Uh, the same is true for artifacts, enchantments, and lands. So this is a very oppressive card, we will say. Um, I don't know that I like this card very much, though. Uh, I think for six mana, you're looking to kind of stick something on board that's going to win you the game. Uh, this is a little bit too slow, I think, in limited. I uh, do think it's a cool card, definitely powerful. Uh, I do think it's between the Puncturing Blast and the Hatchet Bully. Um, I gotta be honest, I think it's the Hatchet Bully. Uh, as much as I love the Puncture Blast, uh, and it's just a solid removal spell, don't get me wrong, uh, the Hatchet Bully being repeatable uh, and being on a 3-3 body is 
very, very nice. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. Please, again, if you drafted during this time, share your insight. So let's talk about this. Let's have a conversation about it because I would love to learn a little bit from you guys. And hopefully uh, you guys can learn a little bit from that whole conversation as well. So uh, with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Congratulations one last time to our giveaway winner. And with that, I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.